to our audience out here. Pacing is just that is what a good listener is. Self in the most uncomfortable situation possible. When you have this attitude going on to the stage, you're going to be fine. Hello guys, welcome to the Musing Box. Today we're going to learn about communication. Communication is very important part of your life because when you open your mouth, you tell the world who you are. And it helps you in every aspect of your life. Uh, like a car, it has four tires. I have divided life into four parts, you know. Your personal life, your career life, your relationships and your spiritual life. And in all those aspects, communication plays a very important part. And that's why you need to be very good at communication. And when it comes to learning good communication, whom should we reach out? No none other than our fellow Toastmasters. Yes, today we have a very special guest uh, guest with us and we have collaborated with the University Toastmasters of Dallas. And we have our president of the UTM Akash with us. We have VP Education Nikita with us and we have past president and the area director of uh, District 50. Harshad sir and we have the vice president <laughs> of membership of membership to- toastmasters mahesh jaju with us <laughs> thank you and so uh, we going to learn about communication so over to you shik yeah so communication plays a very important role in one's life so today and toastmasters of course caters to the purpose so today we are going to be doing something different so i'm going to be asking you all questions and we are going to take this uh, interview forward as a table topic round in toastmasters now mahesh mahesh would you tell our audience yes. what a table topic round is so basically table topic round is a quick round where you have to minimally speak for a minute so you qualify for the table topic round it's basically 1 to 2 minutes and once you qualify for the round you will sh- you will be shown with a green card and then yellow is where you need to stop and red is where you if you do not stop after red you will get disqualified for participating in a table topic yeah, so we do not have the cards with us but i will record it on my phone so we'll have a check yeah it's about how to put the maximum valuable words within a limited time, time period correct so let's start i'll uh, i'll start with akash akash what is um, what is the thing that keeps you in toastmasters So to answer your question on what keeps me in Toastmasters, it's definitely the community of Toastmasters that I surround myself with. I like Mahesh, Arshit, and Nikita. Um, these people have, you know, supported me throughout my time in Toastmasters. Uh, some of them have been with me for almost six months. Some of them have been with me for a year. Um, the journey of being around these kinds of people who understand where you're starting off with very poor public speaking skills poor leadership skills and then they're there they support you to build that leadership skills and those public speaking skills and being able to share those stories of you know growing from a poor public speaker to now being able to talk to you in an impromptu fashion without any preparation or whatsoever is definitely something that is my favorite part of toastmasters and telling stories is really what keeps us i think most of us here in toastmasters uh motivated to stay in the club because we get to learn from each other and hear from each other about our stories and and our lives. Yeah, indeed. Toastmasters provides you that safe space where you can come and you can just talk your heart out. I mean, everyone no one is like pro for the first time. So you it this is like a safe sandbox platform where you can come and you can just challenge your fear of public speaking. Like Akash said, there are so many amazing people uh, there to help you, to support you, to motivate you. So yeah that was really good. Now uh, moving over to Nikita. Nikita. Uh what motivates you to be in Toastmasters? Okay, thank you for the question Ishika. What motivates me to be in Toastmasters? Public speaking was always my forte since when I was a child. From the age of four, uh, probably 10 till all the way now till 25, I've always been on the stage. I've always given speeches. There was many times when I was a child where I would say hey ma'am I don't want to be an orator can I please be a singer or dancer but they would say no go for it this is what you do best and I always thought it's probably because they didn't find anybody else that they're putting me over there so it it started inculcating at a very young age public speaking I would always go on to the stage talk in front of a lot of people when it came to 10th grade or 12th grade I gave speeches in front of 400 or 500 people So by then I still get my arms still get sweaty a question is asked to me I still think about it before talking that hey oh my god 
what do I talk? Right now, when Ishika posed the question, I said, "Thank you, Ishika," because I needed those ten seconds to think. What do I answer? It's always been like that with me. But when I start talking, all my confidence pumps up, and that's when I think, "Hey, okay, this is what I'm good at." But the reason I've been in Toastmasters is, you everyone can't be the best at what they think they are the best at. I think I'm good at public speaking, but every time I give a speech, there's so many points I need to improve on. For example, in my last speech, I had to improve on the pace in which I talked. In I did stop using the crutch words, but then the pace—it matters so much. All your enunciations. So Toastmasters is such a good platform because you always get positive criticism. You're never put down. You're always motivated to do better, and that's what keeps me in Toastmasters. Indeed, I've met Nikita when she first came to US, and I, like I can totally tell the difference. I mean, in Toastmasters, because you get that positive. a uh, criticism or push you you tend to evolve yourself continuously in a very positive way and you can see the change i mean i see you now you you are so controlled and you are so you did not use the crutch words like so but <clears throat> but i mean she has done it you can do it of course yeah and uh, moving on to harsh harsh um again like what was your purpose behind joining toastmasters and what keeps you in toastmasters So the purpose behind Toastmasters is uh, essentially two things. Initially, as I've shared with my group in uh, Toastmasters, that in India I had a lot of struggle joining Toastmasters. Mm -hmm. So it was a challenge for me. In India, even though I wasn't given the proper opportunity to join Toastmasters, I didn't let that dream go. When I came to US and I saw that opportunity present to me again, I tried again, and luckily. I was given the sufficient opportunity to actually pursue the dream and get into Toastmasters, and I haven't taken that lightly. Since then, I have worked hard and I have taken all the challenges that Toastmasters had to provide me, from becoming a public speaker to taking leadership roles, from VP to president to now the area director for my area. It has been a journey and also a very learning experience. Besides that, I still remember the time about my mom. my mom never really had the opportunity to uh improve her english speaking skills back in the day so when i tell her about toastmasters and she does know about toastmaster from her own circle so she gets very excited and she really likes the fact that i am improving my public speaking skills i am improving my english speaking skills through toastmasters so whenever i go back home i show her my speaking videos or my ribbons that i win at toastmasters she still cries and she still feels that achievement feeling that i am doing something good in my life so those have been the reasons i have been uh, pursuing my career in toastmasters see uh, when you see these people in giving speeches in toastmasters you tend to get mesmerized like oh they're lucky they have this tal- uh, talent from the very start or they must be you know born with a silver spoon or something like that but it it is not like that you don't know their back stories anyone can do whatever they think they can you just have to start you just have to take the step and here at uni- here the university provides you with so many resources you just have to go and take a step and ta- tap it just like these people did and look at the difference now yeah that's so true i mean um there is always a good learning curve when you try to be in a very good environment where people are supportive to you for you know growing as a person and as a communicator and i have seen these people grow and and there are certain qualities in them that i have observed that they are very good at and what's best than learning those qualities from them right so let's talk with akash first akash is very good at pace so whenever i review his speeches the one thing i admire the most is the control over the pace he has me being a very fast speaker i need to learn this and like we all need to learn this because when you talk at a certain pace you put an impact on a, per- a particular person right and akash has that thing in him so akash can you please add some lights into how you manage the pace or gestures that you do to answer your question regarding pacing it's a matter of practice and i'm pretty sure the three of three of you have seen that giving practice in certain speeches is key um because the practice like there's a saying without practice nothing is perfect right same thing with prep give, giving speeches it's a matter of how you prep that ends up telling you how much um effort you need to put in your pacing 
and what that message you're trying to send to your audience. Now, pacing is something I have struggled with since day one of my Toastmasters journey. And to overcome that obstacle of having very poor pacing in my initial stages, I would oftentimes write very lengthy scripts. These scripts could go on for five to seven minutes if you read them. And like I would go in there, read every single sentence in every variation possible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there would be instances where I'd be reading that sentence in a rushed fashion, mm -hmm. sometimes in a moderate speed, and then sometimes in a very slow speed. It's a matter of what that sentence or that message you're trying to highlight because there are some things you really want to emphasize or you really want to emphasize a certain phrase right to the audience like there's some parts of your speech that are of extreme significance while others are just there to provide you know background information or support your main points now with pacing certain times when you are giving uh, speeches or speaking there will be instances where you feel like you need to maybe emphasize certain parts that are of extreme uh, extreme need in your speech because you don't want to over explain something or over talk about something right and there will be some things that you feel like okay I don't really want to talk about this let me blow throw it a little bit but you're not really going so fast you're going maybe from a slow speed to a moderate speed and then going back to a slow speed then if you're going maybe moderate and you want to go a little faster then you can but again you would have to go back to that moderate speed it's a matter of maintaining that pace in however you see that speech flowing and definitely that practice that you get when you're giving speeches regardless of how you, whether you're writing that speech or you know practicing in front of a mirror or practicing with an audio file and listening to that audio file on many different times mm -hmm. um, that's something I actually do with the exception of practicing in front of a mirror <laughs> um, so what I would do is I would write that script out read those things out uh, the script out and then listen to the recording and then go back to each of the sections okay this is where I've talked a little slow that's perfect or I've talked at a moderate pace this is right I've talked too fast here let me go back and do it in a moderate pace and a slow pace and try and see where things can be a little bit more improved and then again the main thing behind your pace is going to be the message behind your speech because the message of the speech really dictates the rest of your speech it matters how you're going to present yourself with body language how you're going to present yourself with gestures and the two things i just mentioned body language and gestures will basically emphasize and highlight those points of emphasis throughout your speech thus you automatically through practice will emphasize your pacing to match these uh the form of body language or hand gestures so again to our audience out here pacing is just something you're going to have to go through multiple iterations from speech one to speech n however many speeches you give it's going to come with a lot of evaluation and pacing will also show how confident you are when you give a speech because some people they may have low voice intonation and then their pacing will be very rushed right that indicates that they're a little bit low on their confidence but it's something that you can improve upon so with that confidence you have that pacing and that more um compo compo more composure when you give a speech and it's a matter of just practice practice and just more practice so back to you Mahesh. thank you so much akash for putting light on pacing because i as a speaker i totally feel that your pace really decides the impact of the speech and it cannot be learned just by you know uh, just like one day you will wake up and your pace will be okay you have to practice a lot and that's what professor shaker said once when i asked him about you know what's one thing that uh, world champions have told him and that's what that, that that's the same thing that all of them practice a lot before their speeches and i guess practice is the key so thank you so much for putting light to it uh, let's get back to Nikita, a confident girl over here. This girl is so, so confident because like if you have listened to her speech, which was two weeks back, she didn't even prepare it, but killed it in that speech with complete confidence. 
and it was a total killer speech so this girl has a lot of confidence in her in her and being a speaker you need to be confident when you sound confident you are able to put the message that you want to put through in front of the public so confidence is a very important part of your speech and of your personality so nikita please can you put some light on how you have become such a confident speaker thank you so much mahesh first of all he has been praising me too much this is not the case here the reason he thinks or people think i am confident is one i pretend to be confident on stage <laughs> i am not confident the first question that ishika asked me i had mentioned palm sweaty if you were right here you'd actually see it getting sweaty right now <laughs> so these guys can vouch for it yes. but yeah so the minute i get on to the stage all i think is my words are going to have either have an impact on somebody or they're going to entertain somebody or they're going to do nothing at all i can control what comes out of my mouth but i can't control how people are going to take it so i focus on what comes out of my mouth because i'm not allowed to talk gibberish or whatever i want <laughs> on the stage so that's how i go on to the stage saying hey it's okay even if i mess up this is a safe environment and even if it was a competition it's okay what's the worst possible thing that can happen what's the worst thing that can people are going to laugh at you it's fine good you're making someone laugh you made someone's day people are going to say oh my god this girl can't talk okay take it as a learning lesson fine i can't talk let's do it better the next time when you have this attitude going on to the stage you're going to be fine because then you're not expecting judgment from somebody you're only going to see how you perform the speech he was talking about it was an impromptu speech because i wanted to finish my level akash said hey if you give a speech your level 1 is going to be achieved i said okay let's go for it and it was a day before i was not prepared at all i said fine i'm just going to go and talk these guys ended up laughing they say i'm a humorous speaker right <laughs> now are. they're laughing even now i don't know why but yeah so it all depends on how you want it to go if you think that no one is going to judge you it's going to be okay even if they do because what is the worst possible thing that can happen this attitude is only going to make you feel better on stage because yes I'm talking now my arms are no more sweaty because yes what is the worst thing that can happen is going to become a joke it's fine i made you laugh so that's how the confidence comes through yep your attitude matters a lot in fact like your attitude attitude leads you towards a better confidence and that's what i have learned from her for sure and that's so good so thank you so much for adding insight some light to it um coming back to her shit now this guy told me that <laughs> Uh, in his family nobody considered him as a good listener but um i feel that he's one of the best listeners i have come i have met so far point being uh, being a good speaker you need to be a good listener because until you listen to a new fact or new words or new perspective you cannot speak them from your mouth right you need to go to a new dimension when you listen to it and that's what has that that's what harshit has in him He is a very good listener, and whenever we want someone for to review our speeches or to give the feedback on our speeches, it's Harshit whom we all reach out to, because he is a very good listener at first place. So Harshit, can you please add some light to how you are a good listener, or why one should be a good listener? Plus, how do you review your speeches? So one thing that I get recognized in Toastmasters a lot is being a good evaluator. Correct. which leads to me having this uh, ability to be a good listener so to be a good evaluator to be a good listener you need to understand that uh, when you're evaluating someone when you're listening to someone's speech you need to focus on two things mm -hmm. first thing is to look at them as a human being whenever they're giving their speech they're coming out of their comfort zone even if there's even if it's their 100th speech there's still some kind of hesitance or nervousness there in them so you need to look at them as a human being correct and acknowledge the effort and the experience that they're experiencing at that moment mm -hmm. and at the other end as a toastmasters experience you also need to look at the speech content the quality of the speech the quantity of the speech how are they giving what are they doing is it relevant to their topic or not and everything else so even right now if you uh, if for the viewers if you go back in your in this video and you try to look at the uh, responses that akash and nikita gave so far you can see that akash used his proper hand movements used had proper voice modulation 
and had proper eye contact with us and the camera that shows his yes. experience yes. as a toastmaster correct okay. that is being part of a good speaker and same goes for nikita she broke the ice by giving a joke about her palms being sweaty <laughs> she talk to the audience and make them realize that she is also a human even though she has some experience in toastmasters she talk with us she talk with the audience and she also crack jokes so that the audience and us feel engaged with her that is what a good listener is not only are you looking at their physical gestures and everything they are doing and acknowledging acknowledging them as a human being for being sweaty or being nervous or being unprepared you are also looking at what they are talking about and what exactly message is they trying to convey and accordingly you give your evaluation or feedback to them that's so good and i feel that once you evaluate more speeches you get into that mindset of you know listening to a speech and then you can improve yourself as a speaker because once you observe okay i guess that speech was way too fast if i was there i might have uh, you know given that speech might be a little lower pace so once you have that insight in yourself when you, you when you give your speech you have all those feedbacks in your mind and that helps you a lot and that's what a toastmasters platform is for to improve yourself and grow as a person and i feel uh, i feel that uh, like those four tires that i talked about in the start this qualities that we all have makes a lot of difference But uh, we have one more question left yes yeah mahesh okay. so because he is also again a toastmaster how can you escape from that question <laughs> so mahesh is known and my fellow audience would agree to me mahesh is known for being impromptu in life <laughs> unpredicted and impromptu <laughs> thank you guys for that <laughs> <laughs> and this also goes to the speeches because he is my friend as well i know how he prepares he does not do it. he just comes <laughs> he just comes and like before the speech he just he is just in the shower and then he just okay this is the topic okay let's go and then he just impromptu uh, Im- impromptly go and just start speaking and he does it good as well so what's your mantra uh, okay uh, there is no mantra as such uh, i feel that uh, we all are good speakers overall we all are born, being born as a human it's just that who put himself or herself into an uncomfortable situation and that's what i have done so far in my life I've tried from the very <laughs> childhood to put myself in the most uncomfortable situation possible where I could speak something. Now, I have done a lot of mistakes doing that. I have I have literally stopped some uh, some uh, at a time in uh, front of almost like a crowd of 120 or 130 and that's that's awkward but you know what doing that has given me the confidence that even it's totally fine, you know, to miss out on certain days maybe the audience is not connecting with you or sometimes you are off as a speaker but that helps you build your confidence once you start giving impromptu speeches in front of public that gives you confidence like even if you ask me that mahesh here is a population of 1 lakh and go ahead and speak something i am dead sure i'm not going to say okay wait give me some time i'm going to just i'm just going to go and pause for that i can speak for sure i'm not going i'm not going saying that i'm going to speak very well but the confidence that i can speak and that has only been happened because of me putting myself in uncomfortable situations so i think that's the answer <laughs> so put yourself in uncomfortable yeah. situations well i think confidence uh, pace uh, evaluation listening and again putting yourself into uncomfortable situation these all are very very important for being good at communication but the first and foremost thing that is you know that plays the most part of it is to start is to just start and being there just it it, it you will you can learn everything just by taking one step so just don't be afraid to take that step go out there explore everything toastmasters provide you that safe space join toastmasters or any i am not even saying toastmasters anywhere okay. any other organization where just go just do it for yourself and uh, we will be back with another sequence another yes. video another week like then, share subscribe yeah then stay tuned and keep watching the, the music, music box. box and don't forget to subscribe like she said <laughs>